this is Janet and Rabir. Welcome to Everest Physics Academy. Before we start, we'd like to recommend our Everest Physics books for high school, where you can find more explanations and solve applications and the problems. In this video, we are going to solve a problem about the simple harmonic motion of a torsion pendulum, the pre-damped oscillations of a torsion pendulum. Consider a torsion pendulum consists of a uniform thin rod AB of length L equal 50 cm and mass M equal 0.6 kg, connected from its midpoint to a vertical torsion wire of torsion constant C equal 0.02 Nm per radius. The rod is rotated from its equilibrium position about a vertical axis delta by an angle of pi over 5 radians and then it is released from rest at the instant T0 equals 0. Release from rest means that the prime of zero is equal to zero. The moment of inertia of the rod about delta is I equal 1 over 12 ml squared. Neglect the friction and use pi squared equal 10. Take the horizontal plane containing the rod as a reference level for gravitational potential energy. Question number one. Calculate the mechanical energy of the system rod wire earth at T0 equal zero. The mechanical energy is given by the kinetic energy of the rod plus the torsion potential energy in the wire plus the gravitational potential energy in the system. Since the rod is released from rest, so Ke of zero is equal to zero. Since the center of mass of the rod remains on the reference level, so GPE always zero. Therefore, the mechanical energy of the system at T0 equals zero is equal to one half C theta zero squared. Then substitute for C equals 0.02, theta 0 equals 5 over 5. Therefore, the mechanical energy at T0 is equal to 4 times 10 to the power minus 3 joules. Let's move to part 2. Determine the differential equation that governs the variation of theta and then deduce the nature of the motion of the pendulum. Friction is neglected, so the mechanical energy is conserved. Also, we can say sum of the work done by the non-conservative forces is equal to zero. Therefore, the mechanical energy is conserved. This means that the time derivative of the mechanical energy is equal to zero. Now, we have Me is equal to one half I theta prime squared plus one half C theta squared. So differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to time. This is going to be Me prime or dMe by dt is equal to zero. One half I is constant, so it stays the same. The variable is theta prime squared. So the time derivative of theta prime squared is equal to two theta prime theta double prime. Similarly, one half C is constant and the derivative of theta squared with respect to time is equal to two theta theta prime. Now the two and the half cancel out. This is going to be zero is equal to I theta prime theta double prime plus C theta theta prime. Take theta prime as a common factor. Now, we have theta prime is equal to zero or and I theta double prime plus C theta is equal to zero. But theta prime equals zero is rejected because the angular speed of the pendulum is only zero at the extreme positions. It is not always zero. So we move to I theta double prime plus C theta is equal to zero. Divide by I. This is going to be theta double prime plus C over I theta is equal to zero. This is the differential equation. Now we want to specify the nature of the motion of the pendulum. The equation is of the form theta double prime plus omega naught squared theta is equal to zero with omega naught squared equal to C over I being a positive constant, then it is a simple harmonic motion. 3a. Verify that theta equal theta m cosine omega 0 t plus phi is a solution of the obtained differential equation, where theta m and phi are constant and omega 0 is equal to the square root of c over i. So the first derivative of theta is equal to minus omega 0 theta m sine omega 0 t plus phi. 
the second derivative of theta is equal to minus omega 0 squared theta m cosine omega 0 t plus phi. We observe that theta m cosine omega 0 t plus phi is equal to theta. So theta w prime can be written as minus omega 0 squared theta. By using the differential equation that governs the motion of the torsion pendulum, so we can replace theta w prime by minus omega 0 squared theta. This is going to be minus omega 0 squared theta plus c over i theta is equal to 0. But omega 0 is equal to the square root of c over i. Squaring both sides, so omega 0 squared is equal to c over i. Now we can replace c over i by omega 0 squared. Therefore, minus omega 0 squared theta plus omega 0 squared theta is equal to 0. 0 equal to 0. Therefore, theta equal theta m cosine omega 0 t plus phi is a solution of the obtained differential equation. Now, part 3b, deduce the values of omega 0 phi and theta m. In order to calculate the value of omega 0, we need first to calculate the moment of inertia of the rod about the vertical axis of rotation. The expression of the moment of inertia is given in the question. So it is m l squared over 12. So the mass of the rod is 0 0.6 kilograms and its length is equal to 0 0.5 meters and the answer is 0 0.0125 kilograms meters squared. Now let's move to calculate omega 0 which is equal to the square root of c over i. c is given in the question it is 0 0.02 newtons meters per radian and we just calculated I and it is 0 0.0125 and the answer is 1.265 radians per second. Now, in order to calculate theta m and phi, we need the initial values of theta and theta prime. So, given that, at least 0 equals 0, theta is equal to pi over 5 radians which is equal to 0 0.2 pi radians, and theta prime is equal to 0. So, let's move first to the expression of theta. So, replace t by 0 and theta by 0 0.2 pi radians. This is going to be 0 0.2 pi is equal to theta m cosine phi. Now, this is equation 1. So, we have the expression of theta and equation 1. Let's move to the expression of theta prime. Theta prime is equal to minus omega 0 theta m sine omega 0 t plus 5. Now, remember that at t0 equals 0, theta prime is equal to 0. So, replace theta prime by 0 and t by 0 in this equation. This is going to be. 0 is equal to minus omega 0 theta m sine phi. But omega 0 theta m is different from 0. So we still have sine phi is equal to 0. Now, phi is equal to 0. But you know, we must find two values of phi. So the second value is equal to pi minus 0, which is equal to pi radians. We made a video about the determination of phi. The title of the video is Initial Phase Angle in a Simple Harmonic Motion Dash Salt Examples. You can watch it. So, equation one says that theta m is positive and so cosine phi is positive. Now, which one of these two angles has a positive cosine? Of course, phi is equal to zero is the correct value because it has a positive cosine. As you know, cosine phi is equal to minus one. So this value is rejected. Now let's move to calculate theta m. Use equation one. So theta m is equal to 0 0.2 pi over cosine phi, which is equal to zero. And the answer is, Theta m is equal to 0 0.2 pi radians. Focus, please. This is important. 3C. 
Determine the expression of the maximum angular speed of the pendulum in terms of omega 0 and theta m, and then calculate its value. The angular velocity of the pendulum proved in the previous slide, and it is equal to minus omega 0 theta m sine omega 0 t plus phi. But we know that sine omega 0 t plus phi varies between minus 1 and plus 1. So, theta prime varies between minus omega 0 theta m and plus omega 0 theta m. So, we can conclude that the expression of the maximum angular speed theta prime m is equal to omega 0 theta m. So, to calculate the value of this speed, just substitute for omega 0 equal 1.256 and theta m equal 0 0.2 pi. Therefore, the maximum angular speed is equal to 0 0.8 radians per second. Now, question number four. Apply the principle of conservation of mechanical energy to determine the angular speed theta prime of the pendulum when its angular abscessa becomes theta equal 0 0.15 pi radians. So, the mechanical energy of the pendulum is given by 1 half i theta prime squared plus 1 half c theta squared. This mechanical energy is equal to the mechanical energy at t equals 0, and it is proved or calculated in one of the previous slides. It is equal to 4 times 10 to the power minus 3 joules. Now, substitute for i equals 0 0.0125, c equals 0 0.02, and theta equals 0 0.15 pi. Therefore, the angular speed of the pendulum when theta equals 0 0.15 pi is equal to 0 0.53 radians per second. Now, let's move to part 5. In reality, the rod is submitted to a resistance F whose moment about the axis of rotation delta is moment of F is equal to minus H theta prime. The damping coefficient H is a positive constant. Let's move to part 5a. Determine the differential equation that governs the variation of theta. Use the time derivative of Me is equal to the power of the friction force, which is equal to the moment of the friction force times the angular velocity. So we have Me is equal to 1 half I theta prime squared plus 1 half C theta squared. First, let's determine the time derivative of Me. So we have dMe by dt is equal to moment of the friction force times theta prime. Replace the moment of the friction force by minus h theta prime. This is going to be minus h theta prime times theta prime, and the answer is minus h theta prime squared. Now, let's differentiate this equation with respect to time. So, Me prime, or dMe by dt, is equal to 1 half, one half i, it's constant, so it stays the same, and the derivative of theta prime squared with respect to time is equal to 2 theta prime theta w prime. Similarly, 1 half c is constant, and the derivative of the variable theta squared with respect to time is 2 theta theta prime. Now, dme by dt is equal to minus h theta prime squared and not 0, because now we are studying damped oscillations. Okay, the two and the half cancel out and we rearrange and we get this expression i theta prime theta w prime plus c theta theta prime plus h theta prime squared is equal to zero take theta prime as a common factor now as we have seen in part two theta prime equals zero is rejected because the angular speed of the pendulum is not always zero so we still have i theta w prime plus c theta plus h theta prime is equal to zero. Divide the equation by i. This is going to be theta w prime plus h over i theta prime plus c over i theta is equal to zero. So this is the differential equation. 5b. The solution of the differential equation is theta equal a exponential minus ht over 2i sine omega t plus phi, where a and phi are constants, and omega is the angular frequency, where omega is equal to the square root of omega 0 squared minus h over 2i squared. Use the initial conditions to determine the expressions of a and phi. 
the initial conditions are given at the beginning of this problem so that at t0 equal 0 theta is equal to pi over 5 which is equal to 0 0.2 pi radians and theta prime of 0 is equal to 0 now substitute for t equal 0 and theta equal pi over 5 in this equation then pi over 5 equal a e to the power 0 sine 0 plus 5 hence pi over 5 equal a sine 5 therefore a is equal to pi over 5 sine 5 now to make the derivative of theta we take e to the power minus h t over 2i as u and sine omega t plus phi as v so the first derivative of theta is equal a into u prime v plus v prime u now substitute for t equal 0 and theta prime equal 0 in this equation we get 0 equal a minus h over 2i since e to the power 0 is equal to 1 sine omega t which is equal to 0 so sine omega t plus phi is equal to sine phi plus omega cosine omega times 0 is equal to 0 so this term becomes omega cosine phi multiplied by the exponential and e to the power 0 is equal to 1 here we have two solutions a is equal to 0 or this term is equal to 0 but a is equal to 0 as a solution is rejected since when a is equal to 0 so theta becomes always 0 and that means we have no oscillation therefore minus h over 2i sine phi plus omega cosine phi is equal to 0 take minus h over 2i sine phi to the right side of this equation we get omega cosine phi is equal to h over 2i sine phi and sine phi can be written as 2i omega over h cosine phi then divide by cosine phi both sides we get tangent phi is equal to 2 omega i over h now let's move to part 5c calculate h knowing that omega is equal to the square root of 1.5 radians per second the expression of omega is given in part 5b square both sides of this equation this is going to be omega squared is equal to omega 0 squared minus h over 2i squared rearrange h over 2i squared is equal to omega 0 squared minus omega squared rearrange again h is equal to 2i times the square root of omega 0 squared minus omega squared now the value of omega is given in this part and the values of omega 0 and i are already calculated in part 3b so replace each physical quantity by its value so we have i is equal to 0 0.0125 kilograms meter squared and omega 0 squared is equal to 1.6 while omega squared is equal to 1.5 and the answer is h is equal to 7.9 times 10 to the power minus 3 newtons meters second 5d Determine the work done by friction between T0 equals 0 and T equal 1 C to period. To determine the work done by friction, we have to use the formula delta Me equal sigma works done by the non-conservative forces. Delta Me is equal to Me0, which is calculated in part 1, minus Met, so we have to determine the mechanical energy at the instant T equal capital T. The C to period is given by 2 pi over omega. Pi squared is equal to 10, so pi can be replaced by radical 10. And omega is given in the previous slide, which is equal to radical 1.5. So the zero period T is equal to 5.16 seconds. Now we have to determine the angular abscessa at T equal 1 zero period. We use this relation and then we substitute small t by capital T and omega has to be replaced by 2 pi over t therefore the angular abscessa at t equal 1 c to period is equal to a exponential minus ht over 2i sine 2 pi plus phi but sine 2 pi plus phi is equal to sine phi therefore theta at t equal 1 p 
period equal a exponential minus ht over 2i sine phi. Now, according to 5 to part 5b, a sine phi is equal to pi over 5. So we can replace a sine phi by pi over 5. Therefore, theta of t is equal to pi over 5 e to the power minus ht over 2i. So we replace h by 7.9 times 10 to the power minus 3. The period is equal to 5.16 and i is equal to 0 0.0125. Therefore, the angular abscessa after one pseudo period is equal to 0 0.124 radians. Since the pendulum starts from rest at t0 equal to 0. So after one pseudo period, the angular speed of the pendulum becomes 0 again. Then the mechanical energy at the instant t equal 1 pseudo period is equal to 1 half c theta of t squared since the kinetic energy at this instant is equal to 0. Now substitute c by 0 0.02 theta of t by 0 0.124 therefore the mechanical energy at this instant is equal to 1.5376 times 10 to the power minus 4 now using this formula the variation in the mechanical energy between 0 and t is equal to the sum of the works done by the non-conservative forces since the friction is the only non-conservative force that does a work so we can write the work done by the friction equal me for t equal capital T minus Me0. Now, replace this mechanical energy by 1.5376 times 10 to the power minus 4 and Me0 by 4 times 10 to the power minus 3 calculated in part 1. Therefore, the work done by the friction between 0 and t is equal to minus 3.85 times 10 to the power minus 3 joules. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and share.